So there I was, much like yourself right now, on YouTube, looking at video after video after video of street photographers talking about how much they love their Ricoh GR3 or their Fujifilm X100V. I was hardly invisible nor cool on the streets with my big old chunkster of a camera. So of course, I wanted what they were having. All within reason, obviously. I wasn't gonna get the latest and greatest gear. I didn't have the money for that. I was gonna get last year's model, you know? I'm sure it's still great. So I went on eBay and started looking up the Ricoh GR2 and the Fujifilm X100F, older model cameras, second hand. I was gonna get a bargain and a half. I was playing 3D chess while everyone else was playing checkers. Then again, who needs last year's model? You know, we're, we're so obsessed with upgrading constantly. I'm sure that even older models, like going back half a decade or more, they're still great, obviously, right? Because if there's one thing I know about cameras, it's that much like fine wine, they just get better with age. So I looked up the prices for the Ricoh GR1 and the Fujifilm X100T. I wasn't gonna get anything better, and most certainly not anything cheaper. That is, until I decided to think a little bit outside the box. Why didn't I consider this, this, this niche brand of cameras that are very small and compact, but also have interchangeable lenses and features like IBIS and a tilty screen, and that are half the price? Does such a camera really exist? It's the Panasonic GX7, a $250 used camera that still manages to impress a whole 7 years after its release. I've been using it as my daily shooter for almost a year now, and we'll go over all the good and bad that I've experienced with it during that time. Hopefully by the end of this video, I will have made a solid case for why this little old Micro Four Loser Thirds camera is still a threat. Roll the tape, Johnny! Johnny? Panasonic cameras are not known for being the type that you drool over because of its gorgeous design. They've usually got more of a utilitarian aesthetic, going for function over form. I think the GX7 is an exception to this rule and I consider it a very sleek and stylish looking camera. It also feels very premium in the hand with its nice rubber grip and magnesium alloy body. And speaking of function, considering its small and compact size, it's got a decent amount of customizable function buttons, including even a back dial which I use to punch in and check my focus. If the physical function buttons aren't enough for you, you can also use the touchscreen to access a few virtual ones as well. I know, I know, a touchscreen, what an advanced feature, surely you'd have to pay like 3000 or close to $4000 for something like that, right? On the subject of the screen, it's nice and clear and bright and best of all, it tilts. I know there's some photographers out there who consider it blasphemy to use anything but the viewfinder, but they use the screen 90% of the time and consider a tilty screen a must-have feature. But if you're the type who prefers using the EVF over the screen, well then, I've got some bad news for you. Whereas newer cameras have OLED EVFs, the GX7 has an older LCD EVF and unfortunately it shows its age. It's not as dramatic as I made it sound. It's low res and the contrast and colors seem a bit off. But guess what? It also tilts! Okay, okay, fine. Unlike the screen tilting, this isn't as practical. The only useful use I could find for it was to tilt it out of my way so that the sensor doesn't trigger when I use the camera vertically. So yeah. Thanks, Panasonic! Here's a feature that's genuinely useful and one that you're not going to find on earlier model Ricoh GR or Fujifilm X100 cameras. IBIS! You heard me right! Mother f***ing IBIS! Wait, 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 put your wallet down, okay, put your wallet down, click off of eBay for a moment, okay. It does come with a few crucial caveats. It unfortunately doesn't work in video mode, which isn't much of a waste seeing as how the video mode is a bit subpar, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Caveat number two, 
It's only 3 axis as opposed to the far superior 5 axis sensor stabilization. But putting those two negatives aside, IBIS is a real game changer, especially for a small micro four loser third sensor like the one in this camera. In low light situations I can easily go down to 1 20th of a second and still get sharp results. Now, about that subpar video mode. So I thought I would film this segment on the GX7 itself, seeing as how some of you are probably wondering is this camera any good at video? Hmm, yes and no? Let's start with the obvious. The screen only tilts, it doesn't flip. Yeah, that sucks, but what if you plug in an external monitor, I hear you saying. If you plug in an external monitor, the only thing you can use it for is to preview your files, because apparently some engineer over at Panasonic has a real sick sense of humor. Another option would be to use Panasonic's phone app, which is great for transferring over files, but less than ideal for using it as an external monitor, as there's a lot of lag. The next problem you're gonna run into is audio. This camera has no mic in port, so all you're left with is the on-camera microphone and using external audio. And last, and I guess you could say least, the codecs on this camera are pretty weak. The best you've got is AVCHD or MP4 at 1080p, 60 frames per second at like 20 megabits per second. It's not that I haven't managed to get any decent footage out of this camera, on the contrary, it's just that there's so little room to work with. Unless you get it exactly right in camera, the whole thing just falls apart as soon as you try to push the colors or exposure in post. We'll get the job done if we want to quickly capture some footage, but for more serious work I'd recommend looking at other cameras. There are even better options at this price point. Here's another big feature that the Ricoh GR and the Fujifilm X100 cameras are lacking. Lenses! With the selection of lenses for the Micro Four Thirds mount, both native and adaptable, you can turn this thing into whatever works for you. You want the focal length and something close to the compactness of the Ricoh GR? Stick this 14mm pancake lens on the front and you've got a very compact street shooter. You can shoot purely vintage and be confident in your manual focus with a very accurate focus speaking. Oh right, this camera has focus speaking too. I completely forgot to mention that do the features ever end? Good God, Panasonic, please, that's too much. Stop adding more shit. The GX7 is an incredible little camera considering its age and price. I don't think its list of features means that the older Ricoh GR or Fujifilm X100 cameras are just straight up obsolete and no one should consider them ever again. Those cameras most certainly have their own strengths, but I think that the very low price point and the versatility of the GX7 puts it in a unique position and makes it a much better choice for someone just starting out or someone looking for a very capable little toss around camera. It'll get the job it'll get the job done if you wanna quickly It'll get the job done if you wanna quickly capture some It'll get the job done if you wanna quickly capture some footage. It'll get the job done if you want to quickly capture some... F It'll get the job... It'll get the job... Blah, 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 blah.